Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's arena time. Wow, that last game was really rough. What we've learned here is that you need to watch and preferably play more CCGs. If you want to get good at CCGs, you need to get that experience. Because the more practice you have at solving the problems, almost got a shabby shaman. The more practice you have in solving these types of problems, the more quickly you will adapt to and make the right decisions about different unique problems that are going to come up every game. Because the, the, the amount of possibilities is vast. You're not going to solve a game like this. Um, I don't want this... That's for later on. This... Thing, uh, it might get me an advantage early on. You know what? I'm going to... No, I'm going to toss it. Just give, give me more creatures I can cast. I do have a coin to go with this guy. That's kind of cool. And the Blessing of Wisdoms to go with the two? Really? I greet you. Not ideal, but okay. Yeah, talking about like the, the experience you get just from playing more, though. One thing worth noting. Oh. This is probably going to annoy him. I have nothing better to do, so why not? Draw me some cards. Or you can kill your own guy and not attack me and not draw cards. For me. But yeah, one thing you may have noticed, you know how in some of those early games I kept running out of time? That happens a lot less often now. The extra practice is giving me more... He didn't attack. Okay, this is not the same as the other game, though. He might be making a very rational and possibly correct decision to not attack me, because is it really worth for three damage against a player to let me draw a card? That's not the same thing as seven damage when it's three swings away from winning. Mm. So I think it was a tremendous error in that other game. I don't think it was such a bad idea here. <sighs> the one damage from him isn't going to kill that stuff. I'm just going to play the token for now. Reporting for duty. But yeah, that's what you have to make these decisions. You have to, you know, what's the what's the advantage to doing this? What's the drawback? He's he's decided that the drawback to attacking with him was too big, and he probably planned on doing that. He may have had it in his hand, or he may not. But yeah, probably didn't he? Because he played another two cost creature. But yeah, he probably decided oh, I can do that, and then I can attack again. So that's why he didn't want to give me the free card just for that. It would have been silly. Now speaking of silly. You're going to love this. I could coin two. I don't think I'm going to because the three mana works out pretty well here. I'm going to re-bless the end. And it kills all his guys. <laughs> Is it pro? No, it's just like what my cards worked out to. But it was friggin' funny. That's also pretty funny. I'll give you that. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. Okay. Now I've got four mana. I could cast True Civil Champion and start killing guys. Uh, get an army. Now, bad things might happen with the Berserker, but i got to take a chance there. i got to start getting out an army. So let's do this. Because she appears to be an army. If I controlled the attacks, this would work out very well. My opponent controls the attacks, so it might not work so well. Yes. Taunt's not helping. That means he can protect this guy pretty well. And that's horrible, because he's, he's getting all the card advantage here. Oh boy. Blessing of Might. Well, that's kind of interesting. That might work out well for me. On the other hand, I have a Blessing of Kings. So that would be 6, 8... Didn't I buff bless the same creature the other game? That's really weird how it worked out. 6-8, kill that, and take 3 damage. So it would be a 6-5. Which would fare okay against the stuff that she had, that my opponent has. Alternatively, I could play the Frost Elemental free with the coin. That doesn't seem so great. I could also play the True Silver Champion. Let me think. And Blessing of Might, her... And then she'd kill this guy, but be almost dead. And then I would kill one of these guys, and then my opponent would trade for the other. 
I'm inclined towards doing that. I don't like the army. I have less health now. Mm. I think I'm going to go that route. Because even if I used the Blessing of Kings, I think she would still get killed. And the effect would be similar. I would be, like, wiping out my opponent's forces. But I would have much less control over it. So I'm going to kill this one because he does less damage to me. And is actually much more threatening if he's able to stay alive. So that's fine. Another reason I used to run out of time a lot is because I'm trying to explain things to you. Which I'm still trying to do, obviously, but I'm... Again, the more I practice, the better I am at both talking and playing at the same time. I think the playing is getting better. I think the talking is... Uh, eh, so many you're still there, so it can't be that bad. What are you going to do? This guy has not drawn a lot of cards yet. A lot of these warlocks I ran into focus on drawing a lot of cards early on, which seems like a mistake because you don't need the cards so badly early on. Although, if you're looking for a specific combo, then you would do it. That was expected. Makes sense. What's he going to play, though? Because I can freeze it. Wow. So he plays the Pit Lord, which is big and nasty, but does 5 damage to himself. And then he does more damage to himself to draw another card. Very interesting. Well... I'm just going to do this, because it buys me time, right? Unless we, unless my opponent has a silence to, uh... Unless my opponent has a silence to get rid of the freeze there, I'm not going to get attacked with this thing this turn, so I have time to get out more army and deal with it. Or at least find out what my opponent's response to a big creature is. I have some pretty strong cards in my hand. Avenging Wrath is very, very powerful. So is that. Blessing of Kings is pretty strong. I was hoping that he wouldn't play something else that big, that I'd be able to Blessing of Kings, eat one of his guys, and then be okay. Now it's looking less likely. Let me think. So, I can't Blessing of Kings and do this, unfortunately. If I do this first, oh, that's rough. If I do this mm. first, it'll waste a lot of its damage on these guys. Because I could, one of these guys could get taken out almost entirely by this. There's a lot of gambling involved, because I could hit that for 5, and then hit him with my sword, which would be 4, and then there'd be a reasonable chance of killing them both and getting through, but there's also a reasonable chance one would survive and have a lot of attack power. I'm going to try it. It's probably stupid as hell. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Oh, yes, it worked. I'm okay with that, then. I could have coined and put out the swordsmith, but it was that timer thing. I wanted to see what happened before I made that decision, and I'm okay with not doing it. That could have gone much worse. I mean, the odds, I think, were in my favor. Somebody else can run the numbers. Uh, statistics is one branch of math that I have really bad instinct for. I don't understand why. I'm very good at arithmetic, relatively speaking. So, so bad at statistics, at least in the courses I had. Um, so that's annoying, because he's going to take out stuff. I could reduce his power a lot. My play right now should be to build up an army, though, and he's really counter to that. Hmm. I think the idea is I'm going to build an army... I, I don't have much choice. I gotta do it. So yeah. Fire, attend me. Play that. Ready, sir. And I am in fact going to neutral to re lower his attack because then it'll be hard for him to kill everything. Follow the rule. I don't like that turn at all, but it, the abomination sort of forces my hand. He is so good, so so very good. It's hard to deal with, especially 
Uh, I was in such a good position to get out a big army and start crushing him. Get out an army, have someone survive long enough to blessing of kings them, and have this so guy out and all kinds of good stuff. Not much of an option there. Because I had to have enough stuff to kill it, even though I'm reducing its attack. And he doesn't want to play a lot of stuff with low toughness, although if he does, he can just attack first. Just suicide on him. Or actually, like, attack him, then suicide, then kill him, and then everything else dies, or something like that. That's really bad, because I needed to have the, enough power out to kill this stupid thing. He needs to die before I can start trying to build up an army properly. Not that it seems to affect my plays that much. I mean, I blew my load there because I didn't have another way to deal with him. And two damage to everything is obnoxious. If I could draw a silence, that would kick ass. He would actually get bigger, because I'd keep up doing it, but... Really? At least that's only a temporary bonus. But, ow. My opponent's in a much better position because of taunt. I don't have a weapon for that right now. I'm probably going to try and hold on to her and see if I can get one. So... If I Blessing of Kings, this guy, kill that, it'd be five, sorry, it'd be six toughness mm. minus one, it'd be five minus two, he would still have three toughness left. This guy would have one. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. And then start building up my army. Because it's going to wipe out all his stuff. Uh, I do insist. Go for it. I'm going to play him, and then I could actually do everything with the coin, but I'm going to try and save the Blood Sail Raider for backup. I've still got a decent amount of stuff in play, and I'd be just as vulnerable to AoE with her as without her. Like, he needs to kill something and play some taunt, or kill everything, and, or gain a whole bunch of life somehow. I don't know. His, he needs to do a lot. Hellfire is why I didn't play her. That is a major concern, although it does put my opponent very low. I've already spent my big direct damage card, the Avenging Wrath, so... This would be an awesome situation for an Avenging Wrath, but if this were a constructed deck and I had like two of them, it'd be like, boom, 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 you die. Oh, if he hadn't gained that life, I could have just killed him. Oh, that's so annoying. But... I'm going to make it look scary anyway. I mean, he can, I'm, he can just defeat my forces. I can't ping her, so I'm going to hit the uh, the enemy. It does give me health. Makes it harder for me to just get killed. I'm going to play a giant blood sail raider and a token creature. My opponent probably just has to kill me. He's got to do four damage to me. There are a lot of ways that he could do that. Warlock cards that would do it. And he probably would have saved them for killing me. So there's a good chance it's just three, then uh, whatever the zero cost Shadow Bolt is. Well and then boom. Uh, no, okay, suicide, he didn't have it. Otherwise, he had to kill my weapon and both my guys, which is unrealistic. Like, killing me was much easier. Whew. I was getting pretty worried, though. Four wins, zero losses so far. We we're getting to that stage where losses usually start in hardcore, so <laughs> don't get your hopes up. Kaladin is definitely one of the uh, one of the classes that I find more has a much better chance in the arena, regardless of that. Well, I got Jaina again, but it could have been worse because I almost ran into a Diamond League player. You are expensive. And you're expensive, and you guys are kind of expensive, but I think I'm going to keep you. I'm okay with the four cost. Am I? No, you know what? There's a reasonable chance I'd get something cheaper. It's not too likely I'll get three cards that cost more than four. It is apparently likely that I'll get way too many stupid swords with this deck, though. I mean, there are worse problems to have, because it's super good, but... Yeah, I don't know. Um, could coin out the owl and silence it, and then it would kill my owl. And it was a one-cost card, and I spent two things. That's kind of poor. 
going out the swordsmith, and he won't die, but he won't be buffing. He doesn't buff himself, so think. it's not going to work out well for him. Uh, I could coin out a 1-1 one -one token, which is a really lame play, but again, I don't have any third turn plays anyway. And my, if my opponent chose not to... No, my, it's a whiz. It's a mage. If it wasn't a mage, and they had a 1-3, I might actually do that, because the next turn, if, if they decided not to kill it, I could give it plus 3 and kill their creature, but no, it's not going to work out. I'm just going to have to absorb some beats. Not much choice. Oh, yes. Her second turn is just to ping me for one. That is fine. That is lovely. Totally acceptable. Didn't even cast a spell to buff the Mana Worm. Oh, yeah. This guy is kind of bait, but it's so easy to kill the token that I'm actually going to spend a card to play him instead. <laughs> Force my opponent to spend some kind of effort. Like, she'll cast a spell. If it's a spell that doesn't kill him, then it'll buff this, and then she can hit it and ping. Frostbolt is kind of expected, but I might as well, even though it makes her worm bigger. That's unfortunate. That's going to make it harder for me to sword the worm. The worm is now actually going to get big, I'm thinking. Since I'm not going to have any way to kill him anytime soon, I do actually really want to bless that worm. Or, alternatively, I can just silence it. Yeah, why don't I just silence it? That's much better. What am I thinking? <laughs> Library. Library. Only people that watch my other channel will get that. Which is probably all of you, because I don't know how else you would have found Demag Games. But I do have another channel where I make more creative videos. Oh, what am I going to do? Um, I could coin out a minion. Again, that seems like a horrible crap play, so... Could Blessing of Wisdom this thing? That would deter him from killing the owl with it and just annoy him a lot. I'm not concerned. I'm not certain it's a good move. Yeah. I don't think so. I want to cast that on something that's going to attack. I think I've just got to mm. suck it up and lose the owl, move on. We have many secrets. Oh. Unlike when I had this guy, who was amazing, this person did get a free secret out of it, which sucks horribly, because it's probably going to mirror entity my Shattered Sun Cleric. I can play a sword and start... I can only kill the images because of the stupid taunt, but I'm thinking maybe the sword is the thing to have. I wonder... If he gets the Shattered Sun Cleric, he can give this thing plus one, plus one, kill my Shattered Sun Cleric, and then I'm in a really crappy position. If it's not, if this is just like an ice barrier, then he's like bluffed me out, and it's quite possible, but yeah, I, I don't want to risk that. I do gain some life from the sword, and I'm not wasting a sword because I have backups. Do I want it? You know what I want to do? I want to coin the blessing onto the Kirin Tor Mage, since I don't have good light plays for that anyway. Job's done. Or coin and get rid of the counter spell. Well, that's good to know. That means I actually I should have done that first. I in previous games I remember the to do that. Use the coin to see if it's a counter spell, and then go on from there. If I, that would have been nice, because then I could have played the Shattered Sun Cleric and whatever. Now I can play a token and then Shattered Sun Cleric, so it, it's not the end of the world. But it would have been smarter if I had coined first. I just didn't think of using it to bless until later on. Oh boy. Wild Pyromancer. You know, he can do some damage. Yeah. Wish I still had my coin, but I'll live. So, I can't play him and, this, and Shatter Sun and still cast any spells. If I had the coin, it would be fantastic, but the coin got rid of the counter spell, so I'm not complaining. If I play him, then I drop a blessing on Kirin Tor Mage. 
Because I'm focusing on killing this guy. I have to kill things with taunt with my sword. I don't have a choice. I think I've got this worked out in my head. Let's see how wrong and stupid I am. It'll be fun. I'm going to waste a card just to do one damage to everything, but that's okay. So you get this. Enjoy. Then everyone takes one. Then you get this. Then you get this. I don't know if that well played applies, but it seemed like a u good use of resources ish. I turned a blessing of might One, into two. an arcane explosion. Shield up. Shield up. Drawing a card is good. I'm getting beaten in though. That part is not as good. I wish I had something with taunt, because next turn is gonna hurt. So I have enough mana to do really good things. <laughs> it's just kind of not quite working. I mean, I can play this and then play the Bloodsail Raider. It would be crazy big. My opponent will probably just trade the Kirin Tor for that and beat me down for four. Or hit it with uh, this thing, trade this thing for it and beat me down for six. Six would hurt a lot. Then I'd be in Pyroblast range. I can't do much better though. I mean, I can play this guy and nothing else. Bad things are going to happen to him. The sword at least gains me some life. I yeah, I think I'm going to have to expend her as like a decoy. Oh wait, what am I attacking with the sword now? That's a detail I forgot. You know what, I should have played her and then Shattered Sun her, probably. So if I kill this, I don't draw a card. If I hit this, then she'll just trade that. It's not enough to do that. You know what? I'm going to hit this guy. Swords are cheap around here. I, it's probably stupid to use it and not kill anything. I didn't. It's revenue neutral, like I gained two life, lose two, so that was okay. I'm going to have to get rid of the taunts eventually. Here's the trade, yeah. That's going to be bad, though. I really need a taunt. I can't afford to play him and Blessing of Kings. That's atrocious. And even with the Shattered Sun, he would only go up to 8 toughness, so he'll still just die in one Sea Giant Strike. Oh, that's bad. I wonder... On the other hand, I'll die to not very many Sea Giant Strikes. I'll be easily in death range if I get hit with that even once. So, I'm killing her taunt guy. Because, again, it's revenue neutral. He's got to go. I don't think I have much choice. I think I've got to play him. Now the key is whether to buff him or not. The only advantage to buffing him would be if I thought that my opponent can kill him without using the Sea Giant, which is quite possible. This is only 2-3 damage in play though, it would take a lot of effort, so I'm going to risk dropping the Harvest Bolt instead. Because really that's a crappy use of plus one, plus one. Oh, I'm just going to get Pyroblasted. Your magic shall not save. That'll do it. Damn it. I was trying so hard to not lose that game, but yeah. Mages are mages are rough. They're a pretty good counter to paladins. And they kind of rule the arena as we've seen. More mages, more problems. Gained a meaningless paladin level though. We'll have to see four and one. Now now I'm in range. Now I could die any video. So we'll see what happens next time. Put the hammer down on that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demonite Games for more Hearthstone Arena and Scrolls Judgment videos.